I'm super excited to announce that I've partnered with Pangea Reptile to bring you guys two different chameleon kits, the Advanced Chameleon Kit by Neptune Lake Chameleon and the Basic Chameleon Kit by Neptune Lake Chameleon. I know there's a lot of chameleon kits on the market, but this is like truly everything that you need to be successful with your chameleon handpicked by me. And I'll be walking you guys through everything that's in the kit, why I put it in there and how you can use it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So there's a lot when it comes to chameleon care. So I have detailed, detailed videos on step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your lighting, set up your UVB, set up your water, how much to feed, what to feed, when to feed, all of that. I do have detailed videos already. So I'm sure you will watch this video and have questions on how much and when and all that good stuff. And I just want you to know, odds are, I probably have a video on that topic already. So please check those out, including my top five videos for new keepers if you're just getting started. And I hope that helps answer your questions. So the first big item in the kit, bundle, whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> is the enclosure, which is this guy right here, the Zoomid XL Extra Large. Z right there extra large repti breeze this is two feet by two feet by four foot tall or 24 by 24 by 48 inches this is the recommended size for a veiled panther or jackson's canoe so this kit will work for any of those species at least three months old or older if you have a baby hatchling chameleon i would suggest researching hatchling care this is for three months or older but this enclosure will work for the entire lifespan of your chameleon and is really honestly a great enclosure at a great price I do have an entire video on how to assemble one of these if you prefer to learn by video, but of course it comes with the instructions and you can set it up that way. One more thing to note is that if you have multiple commands, they will each need their own separate enclosures. You should only have one chameleon per enclosure and have a visual barrier so they can't see each other. Once you've built your enclosure, the next step will be to drill a couple holes in the PVC floor of the enclosure. Reason for this is it provides some drainage I put mine on garage shelves that have little spaces in between so the water can fall down and be caught by a bucket. That's something what something you want to do at the beginning before you start building all the, the plants and branches, making it difficult to take the floor in and out. Once you've drilled that hole and you've got your enclosure set up on the stand or whatever it is that you're putting your chameleon on because they do like to be up high and you want to have them at least two feet off of the ground, then you'll want to move on to assembling the branches and attaching the plants within your enclosure. Now, this kit does not come with plants or branches. Reason for this is that they can be difficult to ship to you guys, but also I think it allows you the ability to custom your enclosure to exactly what you want. You get to have the choice of what branches you use, what plants you use, and I think that's one of the most fun parts about putting together a canoe enclosure. Some things to keep in mind though, when it comes to branches, is you wanna make sure they are not sap producing. So I actually get mine from outside. In this enclosure, I use birch trees. Those seem to be pretty smooth, don't have any flaky bark, and don't have any sap, so they're definitely safe for your chameleon. So I ended up using around 25 branches for this enclosure. So you, I mean, give or take, know generally about how many branches that you should be using. Now here are some good examples of some branches that I got from outside. You can see that they're pretty thin, which is important because your community needs to be able to grip their foot around. You want to avoid thick branches and instead go for thinner branches. Um, I like to have ones that are relatively straight. You can see these are nice thick branches, not thick, thin <laughs> branches. And so what I do to sanitize them is I wash them with soap and water and let them air dry. Some people take it a step further and will bleach them and bake them, but these are not fitting in my oven. So that's as close as I can get to sanitizing them, which is what you wanna do before you put them into your enclosure. Now I wanted to be able to show you guys that you can attach your plants and branches within your enclosure without any sort of gadgets or gizmos. So I built this entire enclosure just using zip ties and fishing line. So what I did was took four longer branches that ran the entire length of the enclosure vertically and tied fishing line around them along the frames. So in the front right, front left, back left, back right corners, tied them with fishing line so they were secure anchors so that they can support the weight of the branches. So I'm not puncturing the screen. The screen's not holding any of the weight. It's coming from these four anchor branches. Now, once I did that, then I attached my basking branch at the top. Um, so 
Typically around three to six inches is a good range for the distance between the screen and the basking branch. Now the kit comes with the same heat bulbs that the heat bulb I'm using is the one that you're using as well. But we want to make sure that that basking temperature is appropriate for the age and species of your chameleon. So be sure to look at my other videos all about heat bulbs so you learn all about basking temperatures. But that's the most important branch that you will attach. So once you have your anchor branches, then you will attach your basking branch using zip ties. Moving forward, you can attach everything with zip ties. I only use the fishing line just for those anchor branches. I didn't want to poke anything through the screen. So once that basking branch is attached, I measured it with the thermometer gauge which is this guy here that comes with the kit. This is both a temperature and humidity gauge. So then I put this in there and was able to measure the temperature to make sure the basking temperature is appropriate for what we're looking for. And then you can adjust your branch as needed. If you need a little warmer, bump it up, a little cooler, bump it down. And of course you can always swap out the heat bulb with something else if what is in the kit isn't working for you. This guy here, the 50 watt halogen, worked super well for me to give me a basking temperature around 80, 85, which is ideally what you're aiming for depending on your species. So when you do that, you'll take your halogen bulb, which is this guy here, along with your deep dome light fixture. So just take this bulb and screw it into here and make sure you have a couple spares on hand eventually because this bulb will burn out. And then you can put that on the outside of the enclosure. I typically put these guys in the back corners, either the back left or the back right. So then I can use the front half of the enclosure for my misters and everything else. So try and strategically place your branch in one of the corners and then put your heat bulb back there with it. And then this of course will plug into your timer. And this is the timer that comes with the kit. This is the ZoomEd outlet timer. So anything you plug in here will turn on and off based off of the timer. So this is what you can use for your heat bulb and your UVB bulb to make sure that your lights are on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours. Moons don't need any heat at night or light at night. And as long as the room temperature is above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then your chameleon will be totally fine. If it gets cold in that, then again, please check out my heat bulb video so you can learn what you can do to keep them warm without having to use any lights. So this guy is great for automating things and making your life easier. So once you've got all the branches, you've got your heat bulb on there, you've measured your basking temperature, you've set up your timer, which you don't necessarily need to do at that point, but I wanna make sure that we talked about the timer. Um, then you'll move on to attaching your plants. So what plants you use is totally up to you. I do have tons of videos on what plants are safe to use for your chameleon. And so feel free to check those out. Just so you guys have a rough idea, I end up using eight smaller plants towards the top of the enclosure and three big pot of plants at the bottom. I prefer not to use any substrate, especially if you're new to chameleon keeping. That way it keeps it easy, keeps it simple, keeps it clean, and keeps it safe for your chameleon. As you advance in your chameleon hobby, then you can consider going bioactive, but that's not the point of this video and that is not included in this kit. But just wanted to throw it out there that that is an option for you. So three big pot of plants worked really well, like, you know, yay big at the bottom, and then small, medium size. I took about eight of those to fill out the enclosure. So the way that I attached those once I had all of my branches was I took the pot itself, the plastic pot the plant comes in after I've washed and sanitized them, was I cut two slits in the back of it, was able to run a zip tie through those slits and then attach it to the branches that way keeps it nice and secure and allows you to hang your plants up high in the enclosure without any fancy gadgets or gizmos. A couple things to note when it comes to plants within the enclosure. If you have a baby chameleon or you're just new to chameleon keeping, something you can do is use large river rocks and actually put those on the soil so that it protects it from your chameleon coming down and eating the soil. None of my chameleons have eaten soil, but I know of plenty of others who have, so I just wanna make sure you guys are aware that that's something you can do if you're noticing that your chameleon is doing that. Now keep in mind, these plants and branches are the only things that your chameleon has to hide and climb. You should not be getting any sort of like waterfalls, vines, um, hammocks, bridges, or anything like that. Like you should be able to deck out the enclosure with just natural branches and live plants and have lots of room for your chameleon to climb. Remember these branches are their highways and these plants are where they can hide and feel safe. The golden rule, is any empty space is unused space. 
And so as long as we provide them lots of things to climb and lots of places to hide, they will be safe and secure and won't be climbing the screen and ripping out their nails. A good way to gauge is if you have enough coverage in there is if you can sit across the room and be able to look into the enclosure and have a difficult time finding your chameleon. If you can look into the enclosure and go boop and find them right away, you know it's likely that they probably don't have enough places to hide. So deck it out and make sure that it's a little mini rainforest in there for your chameleon. Now let's move on to UVB. So the UVB bulb and fixture recommendations that I'm making are with the assumption that you are using the 48 inch tall enclosure and the supplements that I'm providing. Your UVB is very dependent on your enclosure and supplements, so I'm sure you'll hear lots of different advice and lots of different suggestions when it comes to supplements and UVB. What I am recommending to you guys is the simplest, most effective way to care for a chameleon and you can do so with confidence knowing that your chameleon will be safe with these products. So what I'm recommending for you guys and what is included in the kit are these two things right here. This is the 24 inch T5 UVB fixture by Pangea. And then the, what is this, 22 inches? 22 inch T5 5.0 UVB bulb by Reptisen. So you need the fixture to hold the bulb and this is the actual UVB bulb itself. So the Pangea fixture comes with a plant light. You'll see it's like a 6400K whatever bulb. So when you take out the fixture, you'll also need to screw out the bulb and then replace it with this UVB bulb. Now you can get a separate fixture and use it as a plant light, or you can just toss it, which is what I do. But these two things are what you're gonna need. Before you put your bulb into the fixture, what you'll wanna do is write the date of when you put the bulb in there and when you started to turn it on because the Reptisense are typically recommended to be replaced every six months. So that's a good way for you to track when you need to replace your UVB bulb. Now you'll often see, especially with veils, people recommending a 10.0 or 12%. The reason why I'm recommending the 5.0 is because I'm assuming you don't own a solar meter. Solar meter runs for over $200, which is pretty steep. I own one, I love them, but this, the solar meter is what allows you to measure the UVI, the UV like output for the bulb to know if it's within a safe range. I measured this myself. The 5.0 does provide you enough UVB within that 3.0 UVI range, which is what your chameleon needs right in the upper area of the enclosure. Oh, and your UVB bulb should be on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours, which is why that timer is included as well. So everything we've discussed so far comes in the basic kit, but what makes the advanced kit a little bit different is this guy and a couple other things, but this is one of the things. And this is the plant LED light that comes with the advanced kit. This is not necessary. It is a nice to have, but I've seen a huge difference in the growth of my plants since using a plant LED. So this is by Vivarium Electronics. This is the 24 inch LED bar for your plants. This actually has a timer built into it, which is pretty cool. And it comes with the blue LED or the white LED or the white and blue LED combo. So I've been rocking just the white LED. I feel like that looks more natural than the blue LED, but you can use the timer that is on the fixture or you of course can plug it into the zoom in fixture right here. But this should also be on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours. And then both the LED bar and the UVB bulb will run left to right on your enclosure, side to side, and that way they give the full spectrum of the enclosure. So you don't really wanna run it front to back. We typically run these side to side. So at this point in your enclosure build, your enclosure is built, it's off the floor, your drainage is set up, you've got your lights on the outside, your timer should be set up, you have your plants and branches, and now is a good time to step back and reevaluate the enclosure and see if there's any empty spaces for you to be able to put extra plants or branches based off of where your lights are. And keep in mind where you put your plants in the enclosure is very dependent on the lights. Like you wouldn't want to put a plant directly underneath the heat bulb that doesn't do well with heat. And you want to put a plant all the way down at the bottom that needs high light to do well. So be very thoughtful and I always look up the lighting requirements for the different plants that I put in my enclosure 
So another thing that comes in the advanced kit that does not come in the basic kit is this guy right here, which is a Mist King misting system, which is my number one recommendation when it comes to misting systems. I wish every single person had one, but I recognize they come with a hefty price tag. Again, a nice to have, not a have to have. The basic kit does come with a manual spray bottle so that you can still mist your chameleon. This guy does it for you automatically. It's great for when you go on vacations, you know, or just, I mean, really just your day to day. I don't have to worry about it because I know that my humans are taken care of with their misking. Of course, this is something you can always purchase separately if you got the basic kit and want to add this on later on, same with like the plant light, etc. But super awesome, highly recommend it. And this is the only misting system growing on the market that I know of that allows you to customize when your mister goes off. So you can set it at like 8.33 a.m for two minutes and 23 seconds. Like it allows you to customize it that well. So some things you'll want to get separately if you have the Mist King is you'll need to get a bucket for the water to go into. Um, and then everything else should come with the Mist King and you can always get additional nozzles and add-ons and things like that. But really this will get you started. So when it comes to setting up your Mist King, I, mine's already set up because I already have chameleon enclosures. So when I added in this kit, I just was able to attach it to my existing Miss King. So I will not be doing a tutorial video on how to set up a Miss King, but there are plenty on YouTube already. But what I can show you guys is how I added the nozzle to my existing Miss King. So what I ended up doing was puncturing a hole. Yes, unfortunately you do have to poke a hole. And I ended up going in the front left corner because all the enclosures are to the left of this enclosure, but obviously you can be mindful and consider it of you know where you want to do it but i always put them in the front corner so then the nozzles can point in to the enclosures and then i can add some like cool background on my enclosures and i have discounts to those if you ever want to check those out which can prevent the spray from getting outside of the enclosure so i poked a hole in the front left corner and then you run the nozzle through that hole screw it in so then it's nice and secure. Make sure you're using the little plastic bit to hold the nozzle in place. And then you can take the piping, pipe, tubing, that's the word, tubing and plug that into the Miss King and then it's connected to the rest of your enclosures and your Miss King. So it was super simple, super easy. And again, another reason why I love the Miss King because you can easily add additional enclosures and the starter supports up to 10 enclosures. So no need to go for the ultimate unless you're going full on with like, 50 plus commands or something like that but the starter is great highly recommend it the other thing that comes in the advanced kit but not the basic is a fogger this is the repti fogger which is probably one of the most popular foggers when it comes to chameleon keeping and this is used for our nighttime humidity so at nighttime it gets higher and during the daytime it dries off and gets lower so the fogger can work out really well to help you raise your nighttime humidity so then your chameleon is bringing in the moist air and becoming hydrated that way. This is so we can simulate their naturalistic hydration for what they experience in the wild as close as possible. But again, this is not a have to have, this is a nice to have, but really does help with that nighttime humidity. So this is something that you can, can purchase separately or it can come with the advanced kit. Now, if you're wanting to know how long to set up your Miss King or just manually mist, foggers, strippers, how to tell if a chameleon's hydrated, just how to water a chameleon. I do have an entire video just on that topic, so I encourage you to check it out. The last thing that comes in the kit that I wanna to touch on are supplements. So these aren't related to the enclosure, but they are super essential with chameleon care. And that's these two guys right here. You've got the Pangea Cal, calcium without vitamin D3, and then you've got Reptivite multivitamin with vitamin D3. Now I have an entire video on supplementation, so feel free to check that out if you really want to learn more about why we use these for chameleons. But the gist of it is you have to have both plain calcium and a multivitamin, and if it already has D3 in it, like this one does, then you can use just these two supplements. If your multivitamin doesn't have D3 in it, then you would have to get an additional third supplement. So like I said, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you guys so you are set up for success to have a healthy chameleon. So the supplements are what we put on the bugs to feed to our chameleons and also that comes in the kit are these guys right here. These are rubber tipped tongs. Let's see if I can get them out. Now I'm not a big fan of feeding your chameleon directly with tongs because you can damage their tongue and I did make a whole video on that if you want to check it out. But these are the safest option because they do have the rubber tips. I, if you've seen any of my videos, 
you know I am not a fan of touching bugs whatsoever, so I'm going to make sure we included some sort of tongs so that if nothing else, you can pick out the bugs and put them into your feeding cup without having to handle them. And if you do decide that you want to tongue feed your command, which is your choice, again, not recommended for new keepers, but these are at least safer because they do have the rubber tips. So these also come in the kit as well. Bugs don't come in the kit for obvious reasons because like, you know, depends on your command's preferences and how big they are, etc. But that's something you'll need to purchase separately. There's no gut load that comes in the kit, so you'll need to provide fresh fruits and vegetables to the bugs separately for your chameleon. Um, the stand you would have to get separately, but I really hope this is an inclusive kit and bundle for you guys so you're set up for success when it comes to caring for your chameleon. I briefly mentioned a feeding dish. So what I use is a little bird feeder cup for my chameleons and then put the bugs in there that way. But there's plenty on the market that you can check out for things that can hold your bugs to be able to feed your chameleon. That's my preferred method. That way the bugs can stay gut loaded and supplemented and they're not just free ranging, they won't escape. And you can you know, keep track of how much your chameleon is eating or not eating. One additional thing that I think is important to touch on, if you have a female veiled or panther chameleon, she will lay infertile eggs and you will need to provide a laying bin for her. This does not come with the kit. I do have an entire video on egg laying that you can check out, teaching you how to set up a laying bin so she is able to successfully lay those eggs without any issues, but I just want to mention that. So if you just if you didn't know that, now, now you know. So you can go learn some more about that. So let's talk about pricing a little bit. The Chameleon kits by Neptune the Chameleon have built-in discounts that make it more affordable and a better price to buy the bundle in the kit versus buying all the products separately. And there's no need to use any additional discount codes with it because the discount code is already built in. And what's cool is that the basic kit by Neptune the Chameleon is at the same price point as the deluxe zoom med kit except for with the neptune the chameleon kit you get a 48 inch tall enclosure instead of the 36 inch and the neptune the chameleon kit also comes with timers supplements feeding tongs all things that are not included in the deluxe kit so you definitely get more bang for your buck so there you guys have it that is everything that comes in the advanced chameleon kit by neptune the chameleon and we touched on as well the things that come in the basic chameleon kit by Neptune the Command. I really hope this kit and bundle sets you guys up for success, takes away some of the confusion of knowing what to get, what not to get for a chameleon, because this truly is everything that you need for your chameleon, with the exception of the plants and branches. But everything else, like th this is it, guys. If you get this stuff, one and done, you will be good to go. So I really hope you enjoy this kit and this bundle and please send me pictures of it all set up. We'll love to see what you guys end up doing with it. And thank you so much for supporting me and allowing me this opportunity to even put something like this together. And thank you to the Pangea team for helping make this happen. This truly will save lots of community lives. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you can give the video a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so when I post a new video. Follow Neptune and all my friends on social media at Neptune LinkedIn. As always, down below you will find discount links, including one for Pangea, as well as my Patreon merch, additional discount links, shopping lists, all that good stuff will always be linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! You guys, you can't attach. You can't stamp. <laughs> Anything besides zip line and zip ties. Zip line, fishing line. Okay, try again. <laughs>